you to turn with me to the Word of God, to John's Gospel, chapter 14. And I'm just going to read two verses tonight. And these two verses are from the lips of the Lord Jesus Himself. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 2. The Lord Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to that reading of His truth. Will heaven be your home tonight when life ends? Will heaven be your home tonight when death comes? Because for every one of us, life, life will end. And for every one of us tonight, death, if the Lord tarries, death will come. Because you see, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 30 has this to say, and funny enough, the word all appears three times. It says, all go to one place. That means tonight, all must pass through the gates of death. The rich, the poor, will go to one place. All go to one place. And then it says in that verse again, all are of the dust. And then it finishes with this, and all will turn to dust again. One hundred years from now, you'll be turned into dust. And that's all you and I'll be tonight. We'll be dust in a hundred years' time if the Lord tarries. But beyond the dust tonight, beyond the grave, beyond the coffin, beyond the graveyard tonight, the question is, will heaven, will heaven be your home? How will you answer that question? Because many, there's a lot of people tell me, well, now I hope heaven will be my home. Everybody wants to go to heaven. And everybody wants to claim heaven to be their home. And many tell me, now, well, George, I hope heaven will be my home. But they're not sure of it. wonder is that you tonight? Oh, boys, you'll want to be in heaven when life ends. You'll want to go to heaven when death comes. But all you have to say to me, well, now I hope so. And then you'll get other people who would say, well, now I would like to think so. Because people think just because they're good, just because they're church going, just because they were Christian, just because they were confirmed, and just because they don't do anybody any, nobody any harm, well, do you know, they think that they should be in heaven. How do you answer my question? Like, will heaven be your home? Will it be a hope so, or a think it should be? Well, I'll tell you this tonight, none of them two answers are my answer. I cannot stand in this pulpit and say, well, I hope heaven's my home. I cannot stand in this pulpit tonight and say, well, I think heaven should be my home. Listen, I'm going to tell you how I answer that question tonight. I know heaven's my home. 
I know heaven is my home. And I know, friends, if anything is to happen to me, thank God it'll be absent from the body present with the Lord. That's what I'm standing on tonight. It's not a hope so, or I think it should be. I know tonight heaven will be my home. On the 15th of October 2014, a young girl by the name of Emma Scott one morning left her work to go to a dental appointment that she never saw or reached. As she turned onto the creamery road outside Coleraine, her wee mini collided with another vehicle. And Emma Scott, who was only 17, was tragically killed. In the March of the year previous, March 2013, she attended some gospel meetings in Killy Gergen Gospel Hall where she heard the gospel preached. And one evening, God spoke to Emma Scott. And Emma Scott went home after that gospel meeting and she sat up on her bed at 2 a.m. in the morning. She lived on the Ruski Road just outside Achadui. And Emma Scott opened her Bible at Isaiah 53, and God spoke to her again through verse 5. There she saw Christ for herself, where it reads, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes are we healed. And that night, or that morning, 2 a.m., on her own bedroom at the Ruski Road and outside Achadui, young Emma Scott gave her life to Jesus. She spent those two short years, that one short year, one short year living her life for the Lord. And in six weeks, six days before she was killed, she spent two weeks bringing children to children's meetings. But there's one thing Emma Scott knew. Heaven was her home. And she was ready for her when her life ended, and she was ready when death came, because she knew the Lord Jesus as her Savior. I love the wee text that her family put at the bottom of her death notice in the paper. It was Luke 7, verse 50. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Friend, tonight, will heaven be your home? When life ends, will heaven be your home when death comes. God wants you to know tonight something about heaven tonight. God wants you to know tonight something about heaven. First of all, the truth that you should know about heaven. Do you know the first truth God wants you to know about heaven tonight? It's this. It's the certainty of its existence. People tell me tonight, ah, here when you die, you die like a dog. You go into the ground, you're forgot about, and you're no more. Let me tell you, friend, you don't die like a dog, and it is no more. The Lord Jesus in my reading tonight had declared this, in my Father's house are many mansions. He doesn't say rooms. In my Father's house are many mansions, and this is what he says, if it were not so. I would have told you. I'll tell you the Lord Jesus secures it for me tonight that there's a certainty of heaven tonight. My goodness me, friend, wouldn't it be an awful thing to go through this life having no hope for the end of it? Thank God for me tonight there's a wonderful hope that lies beyond this evening. Unsaved friend tonight, 
Beyond this wicked day, beyond this evil age, there's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. You know, my dear unsaved friend tonight, but will heaven be your home when life comes to an end? Will heaven be your home tonight if death was to come because God wants you to know the certainty of its existence? There is a city tonight that hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. You know, friend, the Lord Jesus doesn't just promise us there's a heaven, but he prepares for us a place in heaven. Glory to God. Right now the Lord Jesus is preparing me a place, and the moment he puts the final touch to it, he'll come and take me home. And heaven's not just a promised place, you know. You remember this, it's a prepared place, but it's a prepared place for a prepared people. There's something else about heaven God wants you to know tonight, not only concerning the, the certainty of its existence, God wants you to know about the purity of its existence. There shall not enter into it anything that defileth. No person that has never been to the cross will get into heaven. No person who has never repented of their sin will never be in heaven. No person who has never been to Christ will never be in heaven. Do you know something, friends? There's more lies told at funerals than there is anywhere else. Everybody's buried as a Christian. Everybody's in heaven. Well, I'll tell you, the book of the Revelation tells us who won't be in heaven. You know what the book of the Revelation tells us who won't be in heaven? It says the fearful will won't be in heaven. Now, who are the fearful? The fearful are those tonight who know the need to be saved, but they're afraid of getting saved. The fearful tonight are those tonight who know Christ needs to be their Savior, but they're afraid to trust Christ as their Savior. And the unbelieving won't be in heaven. Now, who are the unbelieving? People who won't believe God's good news. People who won't believe God's Son. And I can tell you, friend, I've been at more funerals, and there were some of them funerals I nearly had to go up to the coffin to see was at the right funeral. Listen, friends, tonight. There's the purity of heaven tonight. If you want to be in heaven tonight, you have to repent of your sin. If you want heaven to be your home tonight, you have to come to Christ. If you want to be in heaven tonight and heaven to be your home, you need to trust the Savior this evening. And God wants you to know that truth tonight. Every person that's in heaven right now has been to the cross. Every person who's in heaven right now have been to Christ. Every person that's in heaven right now have been washed in the precious blood. Will, will heaven be your home? When life ends, death comes. And you know, the Bible not only tells us concerning the certainty of its existence and the purity of its existence, I'll tell you what it does declare, the entry into its existence, because it's whosoever's name was written in the Lamb's book of life tonight. I can tell you, God, heaven keeps a record. Heaven keeps a record tonight of every person who comes to Christ. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life, and whosoever's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life enters in. Because, you see, the book of the Revelation tells us that the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it. It doesn't say the nations of them that are Protestants. 
It doesn't say the nations of them that are brethren, or the nations of them that are Baptist, or the nations of them that are free Presbyterian. No, the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it. And that's the truth about heaven that God wants you to know. Will heaven be your home tonight? There's not only the truth about heaven that God wants you to know tonight. Thank God there's a tranquility of heaven God wants you to know tonight. Do you know heaven cannot be described? The only best way you can describe heaven tonight is just call it the land of the no more. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, there'll be no sea. You know what that means? Right? There'll be no more separation. Thank God in heaven there's no more partings. Friends will be there I have loved long ago. Joy like a river shall around us flow. And there to be near the dear Lord we adore, that through the ages shall be glory for me. And friend, once we get to heaven, there's no more separating from our loved ones. Maybe you have a mother in the glory tonight. If you ever want to see her again, you have to come to her Savior. You'll have to come to Christ. But in heaven tonight, there's no more separatings. Do you know, friend, tonight, in heaven there'll be no more sorrows. I'll tell you, there's a lot of things in this life that'll make you grieve. Thank God there'll be no more sorrows in heaven. No tear will ever stay in the streets of glory. God shall have all tears wiped away. I'll tell you there's no more sea, no more so. I'll tell you this, the Bible tells us no more pain. Friend, would you not want heaven to be your home tonight? No more pain, no more cancer in heaven. No more sickness in heaven. No more suffering in heaven. And it says there too, no more crying, no more dying. Thank God there'll never be a hearse in heaven. Thank God tonight there'll never be a grave in glory. Thank God tonight all the former things will have, will have passed away. But do you know what will make heaven more precious, friend? It'll not be because there's no more sea. It won't be because there's no more sickness. It won't be because there'll be no more pain or death or crying. I'll tell you what will make heaven precious, because Jesus will be there. And when heaven, if heaven will be your home, friend, when life ends and death comes, thank God tonight it will be safe in the arms of Jesus for you and safe in the arms of Jesus for me. Now, friend, that's the tranquility of heaven. But the Lord wants you to know tonight there's a time to make preparations for heaven. In the New Testament, we read these words tonight. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Do you know, Tracy and me were sitting down the other night watching our wedding video. And do you know something? I'm still as good looking as I was I'm now and I was then. And the camera went round all the tables, you know, and went round the guests as they arrived at the church. You want to know something? Over half of those people is gone now. Gone. My own father is gone. I was listening to him making the speech. Boys, when you heard his voice, it was tough. 
but he's gone. Many, many more's gone. Let me tell you this, there's a lot of people who were alive last week, this day, last week, and they're not here tonight. They're in eternity tonight. The eternity, where's the problem? And this is why tonight I want to leave this with you. If you want heaven to be your home tonight, you seek the Lord while he may be found tonight. And call upon him while he is near. Because 24 hours could be too late and be all over. Gordon Wilson was an RUC sergeant. On the night before his 30th birthday, he was standing taking cover at a graveyard wall in Armagh when the booby trap explosion killed him. His mother said this, the only thing that keeps me going is this, knowing that I'm going to see my Gordon again. You see, Gordon Wilson had been to the cross. Gordon Wilson had come to Christ. Gordon Wilson knew that if anything was to happen, heaven was going to be his home tonight. He knew he didn't have to hope for it. He knew. Do you know tonight? Because here's the tragedy of heaven, and I'm finished with this, the tragedy of heaven. There's a portion of Holy Scripture tonight, and I'll tell you, it scares the wits out of me. And it says this, The Lord Jesus says tonight, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew ye. There's so many tonight thinking heaven's their home, and it's not their home. They think because they did this, heaven's their home. They think because they've done that, that heaven's their home. They think because they've done the other thing, heaven's their home. I want to stress this tonight. Unless you have repented of your sin, heaven will never be your home. Unless you bow at the cross as a broken sinner, heaven will never be your home. Unless you come to Christ tonight, no matter how good you are, heaven will never be your home. Will heaven be your home tonight, love, if life was to end tonight? Will heaven be your home, sir, if you were to die tonight? Will heaven be your home? When life ends and death comes, let's take a wee moment and bow in prayer. With every head bowed now and every eye closed as we seek the Lord, Friend, tonight you don't know, nor I don't know, nor there's none of us knows when we're going to cross the line this evening. You want to be sure. You want to be definitely sure. Friend, tonight you must stop this fooling around tonight and come to Christ. He died on that cross so that heaven could be your home. He died on that cross tonight to secure heaven as your home. But you must repent of your sin tonight and repent of any old silly notion that you have. And come to him who died to save you. Will you do it tonight? Make him yours. Get to the cross to see. And if I can be of any help to you this evening, I don't buttonhole or I don't force anybody, but God has been speaking to you now. You let me help you and show you to the Savior this evening. 
Somebody else can preach at the harbor. I'll stay here to help you tonight. Don't miss this opportunity. It could be your last one. Lord Jesus, we bow very humbly and we seek thy face that thou will give deciding grace tonight. We leave the eternal issues of this meeting into thy hands because, Lord Jesus, it's in thy name we pray. Amen.